in three, two, one. Go. What's up, Nerf Herders? This is Alan from OC Nerf, and we've got an awesome video for you guys today. My buddy Chris and I decided to go out and do some shooting with the Nerf Blasters today, and he took out his Chronomag and his Bird of Prey, and I brought out the 300 log shot, and we decided to do some slow motion footage for you guys. I took out my Sony Xperia, which is shooting at 960 frames per second. Some of the shots are also going to be even slower than that as I slowed it down in post, and I'll go ahead and make sure that there's annotations on the screen when those shots do happen. But they're really interesting to see. What we were looking for today was we wanted to see what the shots looked like out of the barrel, down, um, down range as well. We really wanted to get a lot of footage of the trajectory of our shots. This isn't all of the footage that we have, but this is the stuff that is going to be interesting enough for you guys on YouTube. The rest of it were a lot of flubs um, or stuff that's really more uh, f just for us to kind of really take a look at. What you're going to be seeing in these shots are angles from behind the shooter where we can see the shot leaving the barrel and heading down range. We can look at the trajectory of these shots. So we're looking for how straight these shots are going, um, how it's affected by the wind. The location that we were at uh, is next to an open field um, and a street. There's a building on... There's a building on the side, and then there's a wall, a really tall wall that we're shooting at. But you can see a shed right before the wall. There's about, I'd say, 20 feet from the shed to the wall that's just kind of a breezeway. So we're going to see the darts also being affected by the wind there. The wall itself is about 75, maybe 80 feet from where we were shooting at. We were shooting as far as we could across this parking lot today. Definitely going to be a lot of interesting kind of shots. Uh, we started off shooting about, I'd say, 11 to 12 bricks high. And then we started noticing that shooting at that level really started to ramp up our shots. So we brought it down to five or six bricks, and then uh, eventually more around three to four bricks, and then kind of bouncing between that and the five and six. Uh, trying to get as close to uh, good flat shots as we could, as well as shots that didn't get too affected by uh, the crosswinds that were happening. There's going to be a few, and I'll go ahead and make sure to point those out to you guys. The other thing we also did is we started to flip the camera angle so that we can kind of see the shooter from the front. purpose of this is I really wanted to see the dart leaving the barrel right at the front. You'll notice um, how it leaves the barrel is going to be really important. And we're going to talk about how that kind of all plays into effect at the end of this video. And lastly, I also wanted to take a look at Chris's um, Bird of Prey because it has a clear plunger tube in it and really get a slow motion shot of the plunger rod moving forward as well as the plunger head in the clear tube, which we can actually see moving in the spring um, recoiling inside as well as the uh, dart leaving the barrel. And we were able to get all those shots uh, all of those things into one shot, which is really awesome. So we started really simple with the Chronomag, and we're going to go ahead and start this video off there. So there's nothing too crazy to look at just now. We were kind of just getting warmed up and we were using the Chrono Mag and then that led us into bringing out a couple of other blasters. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is Chris's Bird of Prey. And in these shots, you're going to be seeing <clears throat> the darts um, flying through the air towards our target. The first one, I think, or the, one of them you're going to start to see it arcing up pretty high, and that's because we were still aiming at about the 11th brick, I think. Uh, there's like a brick in the grassy area there too, so we were kind of counting it up 10 to 11 bricks high. And you'll kind of see these shots going up 3 to 4 bricks higher than what we were aiming for. And then we kind of adjusted our aim a lot lower than the 10 or so bricks that we were looking at. 
and then bringing that level down. Um, and then you'll kind of see these shots going out pretty darn straight. Then I'm going to go ahead and flip that camera like I mentioned, and I want you to take a look at the dart as it's leaving Chris's barrel. Now, mind you, remember what the shots ended up actually looking like downrange and compare that to what you're seeing out of the barrel. last blaster that we have is the 300 long shot so I took this one out again we're gonna take shots from behind the shooter and in front similar things you're gonna see is the first shots gonna be arcing pretty high up I was aiming for I think about the 12th brick and it was shooting closer to like the 16th brick whenever it actually hit um, so that angle at that range was really starting to take and you'll see the wind really take off these shots as well um, when we're angling it that high and through that little breezeway. Went ahead and adjusted that down and started shooting it more straight across, um, which didn't seem straight across to us. You gotta understand when we picked, looking at maybe like the ninth or 10th brick, it seemed to be the straightest across, but it was getting our blaster angle to be much higher, so we had to drop it to around the fourth brick, I'd say, is where we were starting to feel really comfortable um, and starting to aim it there. We kind of do make some adjustments per shots, but that's about where we were at. One of the shots that you're gonna notice here is gonna be shot with an orange dart. That's one of my darts. The green darts have been Chris's pack D heads. Uh, the orange darts, um, I'll explain in a future video, but they're also an amalgamation of different dart pieces that I kind of went and made. Um, so you'll kind of see a different shot with that one. Uh, it's the heaviest one that we shot all day. So you're going to see that one have a very interesting uh, kind of flight path. If you'll notice, it goes out fairly straight, kind of starts to go a little bit up and down. You'll kind of see this wobble, but it stays very true to target. Um, a lot of these shots actually do, despite what happens. But you, you'll notice that it doesn't really get affected too much by the wind at the end. There's a little bit of an up and down, but in comparison to the rest, there really wasn't a whole lot of difference. And then you'll kind of see the shot from the front. The thing you'll notice from the shot in the front is the weight and the build of the 300 long shot really removes almost any kind of recoil and any kind of uh, harmonic uh, tuning that we may need to do with the barrel. It's very, very fairly tuned. Um, cause I was trying to pay attention to a lot of that. So I built this very solidly and you'll notice the shot out of the barrel is very dead on straight, not any wobble at all to the dart. It's going out fairly straight. And you'll note that in Chris's bird of prey, he's using an ultra match barrel, which has no rifling. It's a smooth bore that opens to nine sixteenths ported. And on my 300 long shot, it is using, um, my build my take on Chris's Merlin rifling muzzle. Uh, it's a one and 16th twist, uh, which is a very slow twist rate, but it is twisting the dart. And you'll kind of see how that takes effect here. Those are the three blasters that we brought out for shooting today. 
as I mentioned, I really wanted to take advantage of my slow motion camera as well as Chris's clear plunger tube. So we're going to show you the last shots here of just Chris's bird of prey being used. I really want you to pay attention to a couple of things. One, I want you to pay attention to that barrel harmonic. The barrel harmonics, I'll go through this in a later video, but is how much does recoil kind of affect the, the movement of that barrel. So I want you to kind of pay attention to that and the rest of the recoil altogether, which is also the spring kind of going in and out, which I thought was really cool. I've never really seen a slow motion shot of the plunger tube inside of a blaster. So we're going to get to see that today. The other thing I want you to pay close attention to is uh, barrel length, the importance of having the right kind of barrel length. There's the size of the plunger tube, the size of the barrel. There's often that question, what is the right kind of barrel length? And it's going to depend per blaster. There is a formula that Chris uses depending on the spring load, um, which he's gone through in a few videos. I'll try to find it and link it down in the description below, or at least link to his channel where hopefully you guys will be able to find it. Um, I may also cover it in a future video as well, but using that kind of formula, which I've done as well, um, which the reason I did is because it matches up with some of the empirical testing that I've done in the past. I didn't use a formula. I kind of just gauged it based on other factors, um, sound, air re remaining, and all that kind of stuff, and how well it flies and what happens when I shorten it. So a lot of the stuff that monitors have been doing, Chris just kind of came up with a formula so he can get a good start and then kind of adjust from there, which is pretty much what I'm doing now. Now, when you see the shot of his blaster, you're going to notice that the dart just leaves right before the plunger completes its um, travel. I mean, literally right before. It almost it feels like it's right on top of it, but it's just a hair before. Now, that's really important because it means that the barrel length is just right. If it was too short, you'd see that dart way out well before the uh, plunger tube completes its travel, then you've got some waste, a lot more wasted air, actually. And if you see that plunger hit, and then you see the dart leave, then you've got a barrel that's a little bit too long. And at that point, there's no more compression force inside of your system. The air is now just, that's it. The air is just now moving, no longer compressing and expanding into the barrel. That's one of the problems. The second problem for barrel length especially with his kind of blaster, which is a very light blaster made with um, really lightweight parts and it's very small in comparison to my 300 long shot, is the recoil. You'll notice the violent recoil that happens uh, in slow motion, but the dart has already left the blaster at that point. Imagine if the dart was still in the blaster when that recoil is happening and the barrel is doing this, which is what barrels do with recoil. It's just harmonics if you want to look that up. Um, Imagine that happening while the dart is still inside. Those shots are not going to be in the right spot. So sometimes your accuracy will change just by making sure you've got the right barrel length. Scars do help. Rifling does help, but not in the way that most people think. Um, I'll cover that in another video. There's going to be a lot of that. I'll cover in another video, but I really will. Okay, well those are the footages that I've got that are pretty good enough to show here on the channel. Um, if you have any further questions about this, please leave them in the comment section below. I do want to expand on everything Chris and I were able to learn from these footages and other footages that we took from this day. Um, things that we've been talking about regarding our blasters. I really do want to expound on the accuracy side of internal and external ballistics into our blasters. So if you have any sort of questions like that, please, please, please leave them in the comment section below. If you find any of this stuff interesting or useful or um, uh, worth sharing to others, go ahead and please do that. Go ahead and uh, you know share this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new to this channel, and thank you guys for watching it. I'm going to leave you with 
uh, just some footage from our recent Schoon War, um, which is Southern California United Nerf. We also have a new channel just for just for our uh, Southern California group here. Um, and there's more footage there on that channel from this from this event. Not much because my camera had issues. Uh, but also there's some loadout videos of what uh, we at Skoon have um, as a loadout. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy it. hope this video has been pretty awesome and interesting and educational. Thank you guys for watching and Nerf on everybody.